when it comes to healthcare expenditure, the US is an absolute outlier, outspending all other countries by a substantial margin. So you'd expect health outcomes in the US to be spectacular? Well, no. The US ranks last out of all industrialized countries when it comes to composite health outcome measures that include life expectancy, infant mortality, and the prevalence of chronic disease, etc. And it also happens to be the only industrialized country that hasn't adopted the principles of universal health coverage. Instead, the US relies principally on private health care and market forces to determine who gets what. So why haven't market forces delivered? Well, it's not actually surprising at all. Let's look at some of the economics. Market failure is something that's well described by economists. And it's what happens when markets fail to allocate resources efficiently and effectively. Let's look at some of the reasons why markets fail in healthcare. The first one is asymmetric information. Patients and healthcare providers don't have equal access to information, and this leads to inefficiency in decision making. In other words, because medical information is extremely technical, and most patients don't have the time to go out and get a medical degree, the patient or the consumer is unable to make an informed choice about how much healthcare to purchase and consume. And this relates to the next problem, which is often called the principal agent problem. Here, we recognize that the interests of the healthcare provider and the patient may not be aligned. And this leads to inefficiencies in treatment decision-making and overutilization of services. This is sometimes called the supplier-induced demand problem. Doctors and healthcare providers are often in a strong position to influence how much healthcare the patient purchases. Healthcare providers are not only financially incentivized to sell more than is needed, but are also under pressure to do so out of fear of litigation that usually follows a disgruntled patient who feels that they didn't get enough. And this relates to the next problem. And just so that you know, this channel is sponsored by Nested Knowledge. That's a platform that supports systematic literature review and meta-analysis. They're absolutely amazing. Check out the link in the description below. And with that, on with the lesson. And that is that for markets to work, you need to have rational consumers. And sick people are often not rational. Patients are emotional. Being faced with all sorts of worst case scenarios, they tend to overspend on healthcare for themselves and for family members oftentimes spending themselves into poverty for the same or very, very marginal improvements in health outcomes or length of life. Unforeseen health expenditure is the number one reason for people being driven into poverty in the US. The next problem comes from third-party payment. Because insurance companies pay some or most of the bill, neither the doctor or the patient, and these are the two most important agents in the decision-making process in healthcare provision, are terribly concerned with cost, again leading to the propensity to oversell and overbuy. The next thing I want to talk about are externalities. Markets don't work properly where there are externalities, and I just want to talk about what these are. Externalities are a cost or a benefit that gets incurred by a third party. In other words, somebody that's not directly involved with the transaction itself. And these are usually not reflected in the price paid. And we know that healthcare decisions can often have consequences for other individuals or society as a whole, such as vaccination, which can lead to herd immunity, and that benefits many third parties, or antibiotic misuse, which contributes to antibiotic resistance, which can harm many third parties. Next, there is imperfect competition, and this is caused by barriers to entry into the market. It takes a long time to become a healthcare provider, many years of study to become a doctor. This limits competition, resulting in higher prices and reduced access to care. The next reason why markets fail with respect to healthcare is the idea of If you're interested in global health, then Global Health 101 is an absolute must read. I use this book all of the time. The author, Richard Skolnick, has got great insights. His writing is extremely accessible. He's got years of experience teaching global health. Highly recommend you buy this book. Click on the link in the description below. Okay, let's get on with the video. Public goods. So certain healthcare services like epidemic control or public health surveillance are what we call non-excludable and non-rival. And basically it means that it's very difficult for free markets to provide these things efficiently. Next, uncertainty. Healthcare decisions often involve uncertainty regarding treatment outcomes, costs, and future health status. And this makes it very difficult for individuals to make optimal choices. And finally, there are equity concerns. Market outcomes might not achieve socially desired goals in terms of equitable access to healthcare and the distribution of resources. We as society might not feel that it's okay for a person to die because they couldn't afford certain treatments. The free market, however, will happily let that person die if market forces deem it to be the most economically efficient. The alternative to relying on the markets to decide who gets what, in my opinion, is universal health coverage trying to address market failures by government interventions through regulations and subsidies and insurance has been demonstrated not to work. I hope you found this useful. Please stay and watch another video. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Have a nice day.